mainland regional girls cross country coach Brian Smith, who also is an assistant coach for the baseball team. So he's got some uh, great athletes over there at mainland. We're going to catch up with him as his team just arrived a few minutes ago up at Cherokee for the Cherokee Challenge today. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm doing good, Dave. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Trying to wrap our heads around everything that went on last night with the high school football. It's been crazy. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. Tough one for mainland now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, they, they, had them, uh, they had them late there in the second half, but Millville was able to pull it out. Uh, let's talk a little cross country here. I know we wanted to catch up with you last week. Ran a little bit short of time. But it uh, actually turns out to be a good week to catch up with you as you guys are up at the Cherokee Challenge. Tell us a little bit about this event. It's kind of a neat format, a little different than most of your uh, cross-country races. Yeah, you, you're lucky you got me on location here. We have uh, <laughs> Cherokee High School. It's the 20th anniversary of this Cherokee Challenge. It is a unique format. It's not a typical 5K, which is the normal cross-country race. It's a two-mile run, uh, and they break it up according to grades. So all the freshmen run against one another. All the sophomores, juniors, and seniors run against one another. Now, how many teams are involved with this event? You know, it's typically a well-attended event, but this year would be the 20th anniversary. They actually have teams from out of the area, as far away as Virginia and uh, you know, up uh, in New England area. So there's actually quite a few more teams than, than usual. So I'm not sure the exact number, but it, there's a lot of people here. It, does it get kind of that little bit of a party atmosphere like some of these big crew events? Oh, absolutely. You have the DJ go, and you have uh, all the tents are up here, all the teams and, and people wandering around. It's, uh, they really do a terrific job here in Cherokee with this. Yeah, because I guess there's a lot of downtime. I mean, you have you know different grades, different races you know, at different times. Uh, how long is this day going to be for you? Well, it shouldn't be too long. Uh, they, they keep it pretty organized. About every 20 minutes they have a, a race, and the uh, first one goes off for us at, at uh, 940 with the freshmen. So then it's every hour, 9.40, 10.40, 11.40. So, you know, we should be home around two, so not too big. We don't have any seniors this year for the senior run. So oh, okay. I'm a young team. Yeah, I'm a young team with, with no seniors. So we don't have to stick around for that senior race. <laughs> uh, how cool is this for you as a coach? You kind of get a, get to gauge your runners and, and to see where they're at against kids that are the same age as them. That's absolutely right. It's a, it's a really a great early test. It's a little bit of a speed workout since it's a shorter distance. But uh, you really get a sense of where the girls are, and uh, you can see the impact of the summer training that they put in. So it, it really is a good barometer to start the season. What are you looking for out of your girls this year? Uh, what kind of things have you been focusing on here through August and early September? Well, we're, we're the defending Atlanta County champs, so we hope to defend that title when it comes around, and also compete with Ocean City. Ocean City is a perennial powerhouse in our conference with girls cross country, so we hope to uh, challenge them for a conference title. Um, individually, we have individual runners that certainly are outstanding. You know, we have Alyssa Aldridge, who was second in the meet of champions mm -hmm. last year, the second to Devin Grisbaum from Ocean City, who graduated. So we have the top returning girls cross country runner in the state. Yeah, I believe NJ.com had her ranked number three in the state. I guess there's some pretty good seniors up there in North Jersey. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Alyssa's progression here as she enters her sophomore year. Yeah, just a sophomore. Her, her freshman year was a record-setting year, uh, truly outstanding. She's a tenacious runner. She's a, a, a hard worker who, uh, you know, she won't be outworked. And the expectations for her are, you know, through the roof based on last year. So there's a lot of pressure on her. But, uh, you know, she's, she's handling it well. She's in great physical shape right now. So, you know, we expect tremendous things out of Alyssa this year. How do you as a coach uh, kind of handle the expectations on a girl of that age? I mean, she's, what, probably 15 years old, uh, you know, coming off the second-place finish last year in the state. Uh, how do you kind of manage those expectations throughout the year? Well, she has a great head on her shoulders, first off. So that's the first thing. She has tremendous family support. So you have that basis, uh, that support system there. And the other thing this year is she's stepping up. She's been working a lot with the, the boys coach, Danny Heyman, who's had a tremendous amount of success at Mainland. And uh, so she's stepping up her game and really uh, working to develop uh, more speed and, and more distance. So um, she's really primed for a tremendous year with that. Yeah, I think that could be a really uh, key thing for some of these elite uh, girl runners at the high school level is kind of working out with the boys and pushing themselves against that kind of competition. I know uh, you mentioned Devin Grisbaum. She ran most of last fall with the boys team and, and really 
tried to up her competition level by competing with those guys. Uh, is, is that sort of a new trend you're seeing, or has that been going on for a long time? Well, I think it, it, it's a case-by-case basis. If you have a special athlete like this, uh, then you certainly make those accommodations, and you want to challenge them, and, and they want to challenge themselves. So I, I can't speak. I, I know in some of the other more elite schools, they do do things like that. Um, so it's certainly, I guess, I don't know if you call it a trend, but on a case-by-case basis, if you have that special athlete, you're going to take advantage of, of whatever you need to do. We're talking with uh, Brian Smith, Mainland Regional Girls Cross Country Coach. We've got a big event today, Cherokee Challenge up there at Cherokee High School. Uh, coach, a little bit more on Alyssa before we get into some of the other runners. Um, what I find interesting about her is she's not your typical cross country uh, body type. She's she's kind of tiny, you know, a real short girl. Doesn't have that real long stride. It, does that make her kind of unique in the world of cross country? You know, a lot of these real top level runners are you know five eight, five nine, five ten, the long striders. Yeah, you you see that the big meets. You see all types of runners, but uh, you know she is a little bit tinier. But she's a she's a, a bundle of power and energy. I tell you <laughs> that. So she's got tremendous turnover. <laughs> And one of the things that really makes her stand out is her ability to run hills. Cross country, you know, not on the track, so you have different terrain. And her ability to accelerate up hills is really one of the things that sets her apart. And she's got tremendous turnover. And that actually benefits her, her size and her shorter stride in those circumstances. Um, but she, she's got a motor that doesn't quit, that's for sure. Tell us about some of the other girls on your squad who you're looking forward to have some big years. Yeah, we have, as I said, we, we don't have any seniors this year. We graduated five from last year, so we're, we're a little bit late in that area, but we have runners with tremendous success who, who demonstrated. Uh, Emily Forrester is a junior, and Kelly Glenn are juniors who have been varsity letter winners since freshman year, so they certainly have that experience, and we expect them to be leaders. Uh, and we have an incoming freshman this year, Emily Dirks, who is uh, actually my, our number two runner right now. She, she had she kind of followed in Alyssa's footsteps at Linwood, Bellhaven Middle mm-hmm. School, and, and, and she's jumped in here to our lineup, and she's going to be a tremendous contributor as a freshman. Uh, we have a couple. Uh, in cross country, you need, really need five to seven strong runners. We have some other girls that are competing for that five through seven spot in Ada Berg and Gabby Boggs. So we have... Um, we have some holes to fill with the seniors moving on, but we have girls ready to step up and, and face that challenge. Talking with Brian Smith here, girls cross country coach at Mainland Regional. They're up at the Cherokee Challenge today. Uh, coach, how many years have you guys been attending this event? It, yeah, this was uh, I, I took over three years ago from Coach Patty Jordan, who was there for a lot of years, and and uh, typically this was kind of a, an on again, off again. I, this is the second year we've done it. We started last year with Alyssa coming in. We wanted to add some meets to our schedule uh, to, to help her in the exposure. So this is the second year for us. I, I'm sure in the past they, they attended it once in a while, but uh, you know, we plan on making this part of our regular uh, lineup, our meet lineup, I guess you'd say. Now, wh- what's the strategy sort of as you go through a season with cross country? Obviously, you want these girls to be at their peak uh, in mid to late November. Um what, what are you working on now? Obviously, the times aren't going to be what they are at the end of the season. Uh, how do you go about getting these girls ready, you know, steadily increasing their mileage and all that stuff and, and, their, and decreasing their time as the next two to two and a half month to three months go by? Well, that, that's exactly it. You're building. This is still the building stage. So we're still in the training. Build. This is a good speed workout for today, actually. So we're working on speed here. You're going to increase the mileage as you go on, and you're also going to increase the, the – the, speed workouts, too, and the intensity of the speed workouts. But you have to balance that with the health of the girls, and that's always a priority. A light squad, we have about a dozen girls out, so we don't have a lot of room for it. We don't have a lot of depth, necessarily. So you really have to key on keeping the girls healthy. So you have to balance your distance workouts with your speed workouts and your recovery workouts as well. So it's really a balancing act. But, um, no, you're right. This is an early time of of developing, getting the distance in, and improving the speed. So you'll, you will steadily see the time drop as the season goes along. But, um, you yeah, know, we're really, now that we're all back in school, we're really starting to uh, increase the workload a little bit for these ladies. Well, one question I did have for you is, you know, in this day and age, there's so much information available uh, online in terms of articles, videos, advice, all that kind of stuff for all these sports. A um, little different from back when when you and I were high school athletes. Uh, 
what, <laughs> how much do these kids do on their own in terms of researching, trying to find new techniques, or do they kind of rely on you to show them the way? Well, I think that the top athletes are certainly going to go out on their own and look for resources on their own, and you encourage that. Uh, I try to provide them everything that I can, and I certainly make you, you. I certainly utilize those resources as well. But it's funny we're coming up here on the on the bus, and and our freshman Emily Dirks said they had a pasta there last night, and uh, she said last night she was up watching YouTube videos of the Cherokee Challenge course in the race. So they have that kind of visual and that kind of feedback that they can look back to. And she said I was really nervous. I was like, well, don't be nervous. I understand it's going to be there, but you're going to be fine. But they do have these resources available to them that, that are a tremendous benefit. You're right. We didn't have these types of YouTube videos or any other training techniques when we were back in high school. So it is a tremendous advantage that they utilize and I utilize as well. Did any of these girls know who Steve Prefontaine was? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure if they know about Pre. Some of them, some of them <laughs> do. That might be something later in the season where we'll break out the Pre movie and maybe we'll have a, a team dinner and, and watch a little Pre. There you they, go. They were they they did watch that. Uh, what was the new one that was out this year? Uh, McFarland USA. Oh right, okay. So they they did watch that uh, a little bit earlier this season. Not <laughs> <laughs> uh, a whole lot of cross country movies that you can pick out. <laughs> no, no. Um, what what do you do as a coach on a year to year basis? How much do you research and and are you using any kind of new training techniques this year? Well, you're always looking for things that work, and you're looking for. Uh, ideas that will improve the fitness and the recovery. Um, you have to be open to those techniques, but there, there still are some tried and true things. You have to balance the old with the new, and you have to keep evolving as well. So I'm constantly looking for articles and books. I have my, my cross-country library is expanding, uh, but I also have a book from my father who coached in the, in the 70s, 60s, and 70s that uh, still has some ideas in it that we can utilize. So you have to balance the old with the new, and you, you always have to be open to new ideas. Coach, thanks for taking a few minutes. Good luck at the Cherokee Challenge today. We'll be keeping tabs on you throughout the season. I appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. All right, no problem. Thanks. That was Coach Brian Smith of the Mainland Regional Girls Cross Country Team.